hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle uh, with a screencast that continues my recent theme of illustrating value risk mapping or VAR mapping for FRM candidate customers. All that I'm doing here is explaining table 11.6 in the chapter called VAR mapping in Philip Jorian's text that is an assigned chapter to the FRM candidate. And I'm building on a previous screencast here where what we're doing is we're mapping instruments and specifically in this case a linear derivative. The instrument that we used before is the same and it's right here in green. It's a forward contract on a currency, specifically a one-year forward contract to purchase 100 million euros in exchange for 130 million US dollars approximately. So previously what we did as a first step in VAR mapping was we took this single instrument and identified the three risk factors. Recall that's basically the art and science of VAR mapping. We take a complex portfolio, we identify a small or manageable set of risk factors, and then we can analyze the portfolio or stress test based on stressing or analyzing just the risk factors. So in this case, here's our single forward contract on a currency and we figured out that there are three risk factors those are right here the most significant risk factor as you would expect on this forward currency exchange contract is the spot currency between the spot currency rate between the US dollar and the euro. So that's right here. As, of course, as the spot currency exchange rate moves, we would expect the value of the forward contract to move. But we also decided there are two other risk factors, and that is simply the interest rates. The foreign rate, that's the euro bill rate, and the US dollar interest rate, what, what is denoted here with the US dollar bill. So that's the one year US domestic interest rate because hopefully it makes some sense that as the respective interest rates change the euro and the US dollar those also have an impact on the value of this forward contract albeit less an impact than the spot currency exchange rate so those are the three risk factors we have assumptions here about their values 2.28% is the assumption for the one year or short uh, euro interest rate. And then we have some, again, assumptions about the value at risk or VAR, not of the instrument, but again of the underlying risk factors. So, for example, 4.5% is the VAR, not of the, forward con not of the forward currency contract, but rather of the spot currency exchange rate with 95 percent confidence we don't expect that spot rate to drop by more than 4.5 percent over the year so we finally need as an input assumption and then we can move to the calculations we finally need the correlation matrix so this describes the correlations between the underlying risk factors we have three underlying risk factors so we have a three by three matrix and a correlation matrix will always have ones in the diagonal. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Ones in the diagonal will betray the correlation matrix and tell you this is probably not a covariance matrix. But hopefully that makes some sense. An asset or factor's correlation with itself is always going to be one. But we do have here even a modest correlation in this cell, for example, between the foreign interest rate, the euro bill rate, and the spot currency exchange rate between the euro and the dollar. So there's our correlation matrix as an input assumption. And then if I move over here, what we can do is calculate the value at risk for this instrument. And so the other inputs we need are well, here's a column for the present value of the factor. Now that's just a, a function of the interest rates. So for example, 0.978 is just the present value factor that corresponds, or the discount factor sometimes called, that corresponds to the uh, euro interest rate. And now here we have the cash flows. So this is the instrument. Remember we said this is a one-year forward contract to purchase 100 million euros. 
and positive in exchange for 130 million US dollars. So these two cells describe the instrument. And then this column, again, I'm in table 11.6 as a way to get to diversified VAR. This column shows our mapping logic. And that is to say, we have a, we have a long forward contract here on a currency, which maps to three fac factors, a long position in the foreign currency spot rate, a long position in the foreign currency bill or foreign currency interest rate, and a short position in the US dollar bill or US short interest rate. And those are in present value terms, so that's how the 130 million comes to, becomes roughly 125 million. This vector describes our mapping logic. The single instrument maps to the three underlying risk factors. Then we need the vector of individual VARs. If you look here at this formula, which I've shown before, it's fairly, uh, it will become a fairly common a formula for the matrix calculation of diversified VAR. What we have here with this column vector of individual VARs is here small x times V. That's the position multiplied by the VAR. So in this case $5.71 is the VAR uh, that's 4.5 percent of the spot currency exchange rate multiplied by our position in that risk factor 125 million that gives us 5.7 million and we do the same for the euro bill and for the US dollar bill and you can see this does confirm our intuition that the largest risk is in that spot currency exchange rate so that's our vector of individual VARs. By the way, it's not my point here to show you this, but if we add them up, we get the undiversified value risk of the position, which would be the same if the correlations were all one. Now we have the XV and we can implement this math here. First though, I performed a transposition. I transposed this column vector into a row vector. You can see the values are the same. 5.7, 5.7, and that really is right here. That's the transposed vector of individual VARs. So now I have everything I need. I have the transposed vector of individual VARs. What I want is to post multiply, that is to calculate the correlation matrix, is to take the product, the correlation matrix, and the column vector of individual VARs. So that's right here. I don't currently have that in, but I'll MMULT is Excel for matrix multiply and I select my correlation matrix see how that's the capital R here multiplied by my column vector of individual VARs that's right here close parens and then I hit shift control enter to indicate this is an array formula and now with that I've produced a column vector which is the post multiply product right here and now I pre-multiply the transposed vector of individual VARs right here in light red or pink. So I'm multiplying this by this is the same as multiplying this by this. And I've already done that right here, but just to show you, MMULT, I multiply transposed column vector right here of individual VARs by the product I've already did here. So that's my so-called pre-multiply. I hit enter and what do I have in, uh, inside the square root? I have the uh, variant, the dollar variance. And as you know, we can take the square root of that and get the uh, standard deviation or in this case, it's uh, the v v value at risk. So I'm getting the diversified value at risk of the of this instrument the one year forward contract and the way that I did it is that I used the mapping I used positions in those three risk factors and even incorporated the correlation between those risk factors so this is David Harper the bonic turtle I hope that was helpful thank you <music>